through and let's go straight to my next guest live from College Green, Shadow Culture Secretary, Labour MP Lucy Powell. Good morning to you, Lucy. Good morning, Julia. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. And before I get to a topic I know you want to talk about this morning in terms of smashing the glass ceiling for women in tech, uh, I'd love to ask you about the illegal migration bill. It's set to become law now after the ping pong ended uh, in the House of Lords last night after various defeats of their amendments by MPs in the House of Commons. Late night voting up to, I think, half midnight last night by the Lords. Um, this is the, the supremacy of the elected, democratic elected and members of the House of Commons over the House of Lords. Uh, the illegal migration bill bill will become law. Um, do you welcome that? Well, no, we've opposed this, this bill um, in most part because it is unworkable, it's uh, unethical and it's not going to do anything to, to solve the problems of illegal boats coming across the UK. It's the second piece of legislation we've had uh, in the last few months. Uh, the first piece of legislation did uh, much of the same things that this piece of legislation is doing and yet the numbers keep going up and the backlog of people uh, in this country in expensive hotels uh, waiting for their asylum applications to be processed. Those numbers are going up and up and up and the government haven't got a grip of this situation and this piece of legislation isn't going to help that in any way. So what would Labour do? If you, I mean, look, very likely on the polls you'll be in charge um, you know, as, it may be, as early as this time next year. What, what would you be doing to deal with both the backlog, uh, the cost of the expensive hotels and indeed the huge number of people coming across the channel? Well, we've set out, uh, the Shadow Home Secretary Yvette Cooper set out a, a comprehensive uh, plan to tackle these issues. But in essence, uh, that will look at a number of things because this is no, there's no one quick solution to this uh, problem. Uh, we will have a, uh, a, a better relationship with the, with the French to deal with the issues uh, in France so that we're uh, not seeing so many coming over there. We will have more return agreements than this uh, government have, have currently got, so people who are coming here from safe countries uh, being returned more quickly. Uh, the government have, have at last done that in relation to Albania, but there are other countries that that could uh, apply to and we could send people back uh, more quickly. We'll deal with that backlog and there's no getting away from that. That is just a, a hard job of putting in the resources and making sure that decisions are dealt with more quickly. And, because, and suddenly, and uh, suddenly it's having, gonna... having, having tens of thousands of people, I've got thousands in my own constituency, every MP uh, could tell a similar story, in expensive uh, hotels, in, in hotels that are not suitable, uh, waiting for months, in some cases years, for their applications to be dealt with. Those numbers have gone up ex extraordinarily in the last uh, few years. Under Labour, they were far lower uh, before uh, when Labour was last in power. So we think that our plan can, can work. It will be difficult. We'll have to work very hard to achieve it. But, yeah. but having these kind of uh, pieces of legislation and, and policies uh, like Rwanda that might sound good on paper and might appeal to people because they think that it, it, the government is doing something, they're not doing something because they're not working and uh, and they won't work. Okay, well I mean suddenly, suddenly the civil service and the home office are going to be really efficient at working under Labour. This will be fun to watch in the next few years. Um, given you've mentioned two or three times now the huge cost, the expense of these hotels that are these illegal uh, these, these asylum seekers, some would say illegal migrants, um, are, are being housed in, um, you'll be welcoming then the arrival of the Bibby Stockholm migrant barge arrived this morning at Portland Harbour in Dorset. It's going to house 500 uh, lone migrant men who've arrived on dinghies. You'd welcome that? Would you welcome one, you know, a similar situation um, uh, for, for, for every, every coastal town in Britain? Well, no, because this is what's happening here is is the government just just having to find more and more capacity to deal with their their own own failures in terms of dealing with the the system at large and just adding more and more capacity. You know, in my own constituency, as I say, I've got thousands uh, in in hotels. I've just received uh, a letter in the last couple of weeks to say that that the capacity of those hotels will be doubled overnight. So basically, they'll be putting more and more people in the same uh, room. So so they're increasing increasing capacity right across the country with these barges and hotels uh, to deal with their failed policy and their failed action and it's, this is happening under their watch you know what, illegal I, what boats, I don't know, I uh, genuinely the bit the I don't has gone through the roof the bit I don't get Lucy Powell is, is that suddenly you're not going to have as many people coming over the uh, over the channel and you're not going to have to house them for as long because you're suddenly going to have this massively efficient home office that's going to deal with all these issues you're not going to face all the legal challenges and you're going to be able to return all these people I mean th 
this is going to be a miracle in terms of what Labour are going to be doing. Do you think that the Conservative government are just, is it just incompetence? Is it a lack of, of, of urgency? Why have they not done the things that we know are, would be very popular, not just with Tory voters, but with Labour voters as well? Why, why would you be able to do all these things that the Tories have been completely incapable of doing? Well, I'm not saying it would be a miracle and I'm not saying it would happen overnight. This, this, is, this is a hard job to do, but it's a job you've got to be really focused on what needs to be done. So as I've set out in, okay. the, in those uh, areas, dealing with the backlog, having uh, arrangements for, for return of those that can go back to, to save countries, having that partnership uh, with France, having those, uh, those, those safe routes into the country. Uh, but I think where the government keeps going wrong, I mean, they've had, as I say, lots of pieces of legislation all doing the same thing. They're trying to, to actually pretend that it is easy and that they've got this one policy, this one solution of deporting people to Rwanda that's going to solve the whole problem instead of actually just sitting down and doing the hard yards of this job, which is multifaceted, and getting on with that job to deal with the situation. Okay. Instead, it's just got worse and worse and worse. OK, let me also ask you about uh, your vow today to smash the glass ceiling for women in tech. A uh, new analysis showing that just 6% of girls are taking computer science GCSE. What are you going to do? Well, we are going to make this much more attractive for, for girls in, in schools and give them more inspiration about the jobs of the future that are on offer. As you say, you know, the tech sector in this country is, is booming. Uh, and not just that, but every job, every business in the next few years is going to become uh, digital. And it's an absolute travesty that we are seeing so many girls dropping out from doing computer science at school. At the earliest opportunity, girls are dropping out and just 6% of girls are taking computer science. GCSE. Well, maybe they don't and want to take computer science GCSE. So, so, maybe they don't. Maybe well, they just don't want yeah, to. They, they yeah, they probably don't want to because it's not a very interesting GCSE uh, in its current uh, form and its current curriculum, and that's why. Are we're we going to make it more appealing to girls? Are we going to do textbooks in pink? Or what are we going to do? Uh, well, no, I think that's, well, it's, that's a bit. Well, exactly. A bit so it's not. There, Julia, you're saying it's no, a boring, it's sub it's an a boring subject for girls. So it's how not, are you going to make it? It doesn't need to be. It, does, it doesn't need to be a boring subject, but what we've got is a computer science GCSE. For example, I mean, this is not the only thing. For example, that doesn't actually involve using a computer. It's a theory exam. It's not about uh, all the great things that we can do uh, in terms of computer processing, computer programming, and all of that that it should be. So we can make these subjects uh, more interesting, more enjoyable, and, and more relatable so that people understand, young people understand, young girls understand the job opportunities of the future. But at the moment, it's none of those things. It's a, it's a boring uh, curriculum, a very theory-heavy curriculum. It's not very inspiring, and girls are opting out from doing it. But we can't have a, a digital world that we are now living in where only half the population, or less than half the population, have the, got the digital skills well, of the what, future. What that percentage they need, that's of boys? We're going to be reforming the curriculum. You say six percent of girls take well, it. Well, what percentage of boys are taking it? It, it's much higher. The ratio is, is, is more than four to one boys right. uh, to, to girls doing this GCSE. So okay. uh, it's a much higher proportion. And, and you know, I've got kids of my own, and I know my eldest son has done the computer science GCSE, and, and my daughter is absolutely going to drop it at the earliest opportunity. And, and that's, yeah. that's pretty typical. Well, maybe because she doesn't want to do it. Maybe, maybe on average, boys and girls she often have to interests. do it. She I just don't. I don't. Understand. She doesn't want to do it. No, she I'm, doesn't want to do it. But we need her. I. I need her. We need her as an economy to be able to do it. And that's because we're going to force it's not girls to do computer science. Subject. All right. All right. Let no, me. No, we're not. We're going to I make know. it more interesting I'm, so they choose to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you know I'm. Be I think you know I'm being sarcastic here. Just fine. I know you've got to go. I want to yeah. ask you about. But also, this. it's also actually about. It is also about having these digital skills right across the yeah. curriculum because it's not just in computer science. But if you're doing French or English or uh, you know all, all, all whole range of subject, product design, think, all of these. I think we should be teaching touch typing over anything them. else in schools. But that's just me. Um, as you watched enough newspaper editors typing with two fingers. Um, can I ask you also just about this battle over benefit cap? Um, we, we understand. From the, the Keir Starmer, if he becomes Prime Minister next year, will not be in uh, ending that cap of two children for child benefit uh, claimants uh, for any family once you've already gone on benefits. Um, uh, but uh, we know Angela Rayner, the Labour deputy leader, has called this an obscene and inhumane cap on benefits. We're told again and again that this is hurting the poorest families. Whose side are you on? 
Well, look, both things are true. I think you know, one is about... It's obscene and inhumane, but you're going to keep it. No, it's... it's it's not, well, it's about uh, what are we going to do in, in government? What can we afford to do in government? So policies can be bad. We've opposed policies. But can, is the economic situation one that we can then for, afford to, to reverse that when we uh, immediately come in? And because the Conservatives have tanked the economy, uh, interest rates going through the roof, inflation going through the roof, the cost of borrowing going through the roof, and the deaths of the country uh, also uh, spiralling, you know, we've got to show where the money's going to come from for each and every policy that we want to, to but you'd to keep an obs you'd keep a policy really tough about prioritizing about prioritizing what we yeah. can and okay and no i understand do. So this, i understand lucy it's from. about prioritizing but you wouldn't prioritize in your view a policy scrapping a policy that you and angela rayner and many others in the front bench consider to be obscene and inhumane you wouldn't prioritize that that's quite bizarre there are, there, there are there are lots of, of uh, bad policies and there are lots of, of good po good labor policies that we would want to, to bring in in government which we're not going to be able to do because okay. the economic situation is such that we just can't do All that right. I know you've got another interview to get to I'll let you get on Lucy Powell there Great. shadow coach thank secretary you. Really love to speak to you. thank you I don't think she meant that <laughs>